Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Ayala, and today we're going to be making some shingles for a roof. I use cardboard to put these together. I'm also going to show you how I paint them, how I attach them, of course. Before we get to the supplies list, if you're interested in these tiny mushrooms that I've planted on top of the roof, I just released a video for these as well, and that link should be popping up on your screen, and will also be in the description box below. Alright guys, let's quickly go over what I used to make those shingles, and I'll talk about the cardboard at the end, because there's other options that you can be using for cardboard. Okay, so I used scissors, X-Acto knife, a couple different sized brushes, a straight edge ruler, a cutting mat, tacky glue, also comes in handy to have hot glue, but it's not necessary to put the roof together. The colors that I used on the roof are all regular craft paint that I got in the dollar store. Black, golden brown, and burnt umber. And this was totally unplanned. I ended up using a water-based satin interior varathene. You don't have to do the same thing. I did like the results and it made the colors pop. All right, let's talk about the shingles now. I made these from cardboard, like I said, and I just used a regular cardboard box that an Amazon order came in, one of these here. When you cut into boxes like that, you'll see open edges like this, and you'll want to fill those in because you will see one edge of that cardboard once these are stacked. So I had to use a wood filler to fill that in. If you don't want to be messing around with that wood filler, there's other options for shingles. You can use foam board, you can find that in Walmart or any dollar store. You can also use chipboard, and I happen to have a tutorial on how to make this out of cereal boxes here on my YouTube channel. If you use a chipboard, I would make it about four, mil four millimeters thick. Or you could just use regular cardboard from a cereal box like I did on this roof here. This roof I put together a couple years ago, and I showed it on my Facebook page, and a number of you wanted to know how I got this color, and I'm going to be showing that here in this video. And at the end of the video, you'll also see me decorating the roof with some tiny mushrooms. This is a video tutorial here on my YouTube channel. And I also use some moss that I found in a dollar store. Alright my friends, let's get started. This is a room that I just built with foil and then my fake bark over top. And it needs a roof, so I'm going to attach this first because you can see it's quite uneven. I can't just put shingles on top of this. And there's big dips here. So I'm going to glue this in place first, and that will solve my uneven problem, and then I can just glue my shingles on top. And I'm going to be using hot glue to put this piece in. Now I always say never use hot glue as your only source of glue to hold your piece together because eventually the temperature changes and that could just let go. Um, I don't mind using hot glue here because when I'm all done my shingles, I'm going to be putting moss in around the edges with tacky glue. So that will be holding this in permanently once I get my uh, moss and everything attached. Alright, that cardboard's in place. I'm just going to give a black wash over it. This is actually watered down black paint. I have water in here. And this part isn't totally necessary. You don't have to paint it black. I do it because I don't want to have to worry about seeing cardboard underneath my shingles later on or have to worry about covering up any cardboard color later on. So I find this is just a quick easy step to do. It saves time later on. So next we're going to be cutting some shingles and I cut strips like this out of a regular cardboard box. So once I cut all my cardboard uh, pieces then I cut them down into strips like this. And you'll notice that all of my strips, the lines in the cardboard are going the same way. So when I put my shingles on, I'm going to be cutting these when I'm ready to put them on, and I want all those lines to be going in the same direction. So I want to square up my piece first so I can get some strips out of it. So I'll just use my cutting mat to help me do that first. So I got square edges now. You can do any width that you want to do. I'm going to choose three squares. It just makes it easier for me. Instead of having to measure it all out, I'm just going to go by the squares. One, two, three. So there's all my strips. Now the bottom of the shingles are going to be seen. I'm not worried about the sides or the top of the shingles. But the very bottom, see when these get stacked like this, you're going to see this part here. So I'm going to fill that in. Just one side of the strip 
each of them uh, with wood filler and then let it dry before I cut them into shingles. And for this part, I don't, I'm not going for exact measurements. I will do approximately the same size for one strip. And so the next strip I'll do a little bit more narrow. I want a variety of different sizes. You can do it one of two ways. You can hot glue them in place and then use tacky glue along the top, or you can just put tacky glue. I found when I was just using tacky glue, some of them would slide before I would even know what was going on, and they'd be totally wonky looking, a little bit more wonky than I like. So I decided to start using hot glue and tacky glue together, and it kind of sped up the process. And of course, I'm going to use the plain side on top always. When you use these boxes, some of them will have writing. Okay, now I have that first row in, so what I do is just run a bead of glue along the top and those shingles won't be going anywhere. So I made it to the top and the top of mine here is going to have moss here. I'm going to be covering this with moss. I also have a bird's nest coming. I'm going to be covering in the sides here with moss. If you come to the peak of your roof, you probably want to make a long strip like this and put it straight across the top to finish it off. And that would finish it off nicely. I don't need one for my roof. And you can see none of my shingles are really even. I kind of staggered them and made them look uneven on purpose. So now I'm going to do a black wash on top of this before I paint it. Again, you don't have to do it that way. I like doing the black wash because you can get an aged look. You can also get a grainy look without having to do too much work. And again, my paint is watered down. I have water in here and it doesn't really matter how much you use. Uh, when I do a black wash, usually I'm mixing 50-50. So before I get painting, I forgot to tell you, if you have glue strands, if you use hot glue like I did, then you'll have little spiderweb like strands. You can easily get rid of those with a hairdryer. Just pop on your hairdryer and just go over it just once or twice and those strands will disappear. And I did end up using a smaller brush to get in the little nooks and crannies. And actually I had forgotten, you will end up with little spots where you'll see where the black paint didn't get into and you'll have to work at it a little bit harder. You could paint these strips before you cut them into shingles and that would make it a lot easier too. Just like I did that that black wash on that base piece of cardboard. I could have done the same thing with these shingles before I cut them. And I'm doing another coat of color right now anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now I'm going to put on my golden brown. So just get the excess off. When I was painting, I'm always pulling the brush in the same direction, so from top to bottom, and I go very quickly. I don't stay in one spot, and I just keep going around until it's all covered in. And you can see I left a lot of that black there. I want that there. That adds to the aged look. So I'm going to leave this for about a half an hour. I'm going to set a fan on it. Once it's completely dry, I'm also going to be adding another dry brush, and I'll probably do a burnt umber or maybe some more black and just pull that very lightly across the top but we'll do that together on film I'll just let it dry but I think it's looking pretty cool already it's exactly the look that I was going for I got some burnt umber here and some black and I'm going to do a very very light dry brush so I'm going to get the, all the excess off that brush and just pull it through It's hard for you to see it on film, but I can see streaks coming in that I'm really liking what I'm seeing. So once it's dry, I'll show you a close-up. Again, just very, very lightly and keeping that brush moving and never staying in the same spot. Okay, so I want this roof to look a little bit wet. So I'm going to add a clear coat and see if that will give me the look that I want. I haven't done this before, so we're going to do it for the first time together. 
I left it dry overnight. Uh, the clear coat dried very shiny, so I toned it down a little bit with another dry brush using black, very, very lightly, and then a little bit more of that golden brown. And I'm very happy with the color today. I hope you can see the color that I can see in person. That roof actually looks beautiful. And I think that clear coat that I put on there, like I said that was the first time I ever used that clear coat, really helped that color pop when I put the dry brush on because I did add a dry brush with the golden brown and some black after that clear coat was dry. And I think it just turned out beautiful. So I'll definitely be using that same technique again when I build another roof. All right, so the mushrooms ended up, I just pushed those in, and most of them are just held in that way. I did use some hot glue, where is it, on this little bunch here. I just dropped in some hot glue right through here, and then I shoved some moss down just to kind of keep them in a clump like that. You can use tacky glue as well. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas for building yourself your own roof maybe some mushrooms for it too. If you do make a roof like this, I'd sure love to see it. You can post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon.